Okay, welcome back to the lab, folks. Uh, today we're going to do uh, an experiment with regards to the mole relationship in a chemical reaction. Um, it's possible to determine the mole ratio in a chemical reaction by balancing equations. Now, this year we haven't learned how to do that yet, but we will shortly. The coefficients of the balanced equation give the mole ratio in a chemical reaction. In an earlier experiment, we found that that mole ratio could also be determined by doing a laboratory experiment. In this experiment, we will measure the mass of some reactants and products in several reactions. From these masses, we will find the moles of each reactant and product. So we're going to be converting from grams to moles. You guys are really, really good at that. You will then compare the experimental mole ratios with that of the actual balanced equation, which I'm going to give you since we haven't learned how to do that yet. So let me give you an example. Here's some aluminum reacting with hydrochloric acid, and when it reacts, it forms um, aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. Well, suppose I started with 5.72 grams of aluminum and a solution that had 4.17 grams of HCl in it. All of the HCl reacts, leaving 4.51 grams of aluminum unreacted. We would now know the following. Let's see. We would know that 4.17 grams of HCl did react. That's how many grams I gave you folks. Remember, 4.17 grams of HCl. Um, and we can convert that to moles. We can go from grams by dividing by the molecular weight of HCl to moles of HCl. Okay. We can then find the moles of aluminum that reacted. Remember I started with 5.72 grams and there were only 4.51 grams left over? That means 1.21 grams reacted. And once again, I can go from grams by dividing by the atomic mass of aluminum and get into moles. So I have moles of HCl that reacted, that part of my reaction, and moles of HCl that reacted, that part of my reaction. I can divide each by the lowest number to get a mole ratio. Remember in the previous lab on magnesium oxide we did that? Now the balanced equation turns out to be a 2 to 6 to 2 to 3 ratio. That means for every two aluminums I need 6 HCLs. Well you math kiddos know that that's the same as 1 to 3, right? Well in my experiment I got 2.54 HCLs for every one aluminum. Well, once again, this is an experiment, so we can't expect our experimental values to be identical to our theoretical values, but we can hope and work for the best. All right? Now, the pre-lab question is very similar to what we just did. Make sure you guys complete that. You won't have, to have it ready by the first day, but by the beginning of the second day, that pre-lab question will have to be finished, and there's space for you to complete it on your report sheet at the very, very bottom. Okay? All right. The instructions for day one are uh, find the mass of a 250 milliliter beaker and record this mass in your data table. So let me zoom out a little bit and we'll show the, well, let's go the other direction. We're going to show the equipment we're going to use today. Boom, there we go. We have a balance, we have a stirring rod, we have a piece of copper wire, and we have a vial with some silver nitrate in it, and of course a beaker. So I want to find the mass of this beaker, empty. So we'll set that on the balance. And let's see, there's a little bit of a glare here, but I believe that you can see that that says 105.23 grams. So I'm going to pull out my data table, and I'm going to record that in the appropriate spot in my data table. 105.23 grams. Okay, then I want to find, let's go back to my instructions here, a small vial, which you guys should all, all have at your workstations. It contains some silver nitrate, it's that powder, that salt in the bottom. Now be careful with this. This can stain your skin a dark brown, and the only way that comes off is as those skin cells die and fall off, that stain will finally go away. So it, it can't be washed off with soap. Also, it doesn't appear right away because the silver nitrate reacts with light. So as it's exposed to light, that black spot or freckle will show up wherever you've touched it on your skin. Now we want to weigh this vial with the silver nitrate in it, and let's zoom in on that. The silver nitrate in the vial is 11.75 grams. So there's a spot on my data table for that, the silver nitrate plus the vial, uh, mass of vial and silver nitrate, 11.75 grams. Now by the way, when you do this, make sure you guys use the same balance every time. If there's um, a miscalibrated balance, since we're measuring by mass difference, that difference or that change will, um, 
the calibration problem will cancel itself out. So pick a balance and use that for the whole lab. Okay, we're going to take the contents of, that, uh, of the vial and we'll just place it inside our beaker. And then we will find the mass of the vial empty. So let's take a look. There's the empty vial, 10.33 grams. And we'll put that on our data table. So the mass of our vial that's empty, 10.33 grams. Now we can calculate the mass of silver nitrate that I've just placed in my beaker. And that would be the difference between the uh, vial with the silver nitrate and the vial empty. So let's do the math here. That's a 2, that's a 4, and that's a 1. Surprisingly enough, that's about $3, 1.42 grams. That's about 3 or $4 worth of silver nitrate. Doesn't seem like a lot. It's a very small amount in your beaker, but silver nitrate's quite expensive these days. Okay, back to our instructions here. Um, let's see. Add distilled water to the beaker until the beaker is about half full. So we're going to get our distilled water out. Some of you kiddos are going to want to squirt it in there. We can just pour it in there. So we'll move our instructions out of the way and we'll add some distilled water oh, until it's about half full. I can go a bit further there. Now you'll notice the silver nitrate will dissolve in the water, which is wonderful. All nitrates are soluble. We have a stirring rod to help the process along a little bit. And we'll stir that up and we'll get all of that silver nitrate dissolved in the water. We're going to set that aside for just a second and go on to the next part. Um, let's see, we're going to get a piece of copper wire next. So we all have a piece of copper wire at our workstation. And you can either use your finger, a pencil, or a test tube, and we can wind that around that. But before we do that, we want to measure the mass of the wire. So let's get back on our balance again. And we're going to put our copper wire on the balance pan. And let's see. Let's maybe fold that to make sure it all makes contact. There we go. And so it looks like I have 1.70 grams of copper wire. So we're going to pull out our data table here and we're going to record the mass of the copper wire 1.70 grams. Now the next blank on our data, data table says the mass of copper wire after the reaction. And students will always ask me, well what do I put for that? Well, you can't do that till the reaction's over with. And we won't find that until day two. Okay, so back to our instructions. We have our copper wire out and the instructions tell us to Let's see, coil the wire around a pencil, test tube, or even your finger and leave about five centimeters uh, of the wire uncoiled and make a hook. So we'll take my little pen here and I'm going to hold the copper wire on my pen with my thumb. I'm just going to wind it around my pen. You guys with me on this? We'll leave a bit that's not wound and we're going to make a little hook at the tip right there. Okay, so your wire should look something like that. Okay? All right, so we're going to make sure that the silver nitrate's dissolved, and that does take a couple of minutes, and it looks like, you know, all my silver nitrate's gone into solution there. And once again, that rod, that stirring rod kiddos, will have silver nitrate in solution. If you touch it with your fingers, you're going to get a stain on your fingers after a little while. You won't see it right away. So let's just set that off to the side. Make sure it's, if it ends up getting your desktop wet, make sure you wipe it down with paper towels. So some innocent person walking by doesn't stick their hand in it. Okay, then we're going to take that copper wire, stretch it out a little bit, okay, and we're going to place it in our beaker. Just like that. Alright, then we're going to add some water. We want this to be towards the top, I don't know, maybe 80 or 90 percent of the way full. And we're going to take a watch glass. This is a watch glass. It sort of looks like uh, Godzilla's contact lens. We're going to place that over our beaker. It's called the watch glass because now we can look down on top of it and we can watch what's happening. But the cool thing is, is if we look on the side. So let's bring this up. We'll look on the side here, see if we can get a good view. And you notice that copper wire is no longer uh, a reddish orange. It's turning black. Now what's happening is the silver from the silver nitrate is depositing on that copper wire. Isn't that pretty cool? Now we're going to leave this in our lab locker for a couple of days. We're going to let, let it sit overnight. In fact, it'll be one block period for you folks. And when we come back, we're going to marvel at the reaction that occurred. So this is the end of, first, uh, of day one. Once again, you'll put this in your lab locker. 
Um, make sure uh, you follow my instructions so you put it in the proper locker. You know where to find it again. And uh, that's it for day one. Alrighty, pretty straightforward. See you in class. Bye-bye.